Hello. Um, I'm going to speak about institutional research. In the last few decades, there's been a huge growth of interest in institutions in many social science, sciences, including economics, political science, sociology, even philosophers are talking about institutions, anthropologists, and in many other disciplines. We've had several Nobel Prizes given to economists, including Douglas North, Oliver Williamson, Ronald Coase, Eleanor Ostrom, who have done work on institutions, particularly in economic and political contexts. This huge interest in institutions, how they work, the problems they create, how people are motivated to follow rules and institutions, and what kind of institutions we need to tackle major problems like poverty, inequality, and the climate emergency. So my, myself and a few others are building networks of people who are working across disciplines to actually further institutional research and to create conversations between scholars from different disciplines about the ways forward for this kind of scientific endeavor. There's several key questions involved. I'll simply talk about a few of them. The first major question is one of motivation. The question is, if institutions are basically systems of rules, they are rules of just shared across a community or a society, how do we explain how people follow those rules? Or, in some cases, explain why people break rules? Why do people follow the law for much of the time and some people break the law? What kind of motivations are involved for individuals in those particular cases? This is very important because without understanding of rule following and the motives to follow rules, we cannot design or support effective institutions. Now, economists have one particular answer to this question, which is based on utility maximization. It's the idea that individuals are maximizing ut their utility, and they will follow rules when it's consistent with that objective. This works for some kinds of institution, particularly coordination situations, like driving on the left or driving on the right of the road in a particular country. We all have an incentive to follow the convention in those circumstances, whatever we prefer in other circumstances, from even if we come from a foreign country where they do things differently. There's a coordination incentive to do that. So economists have some good answers, but in other cases, some other things become much more important. If you talk about legal systems and following the law and creating institutions that work at the legal level so we get what we call the rule of law which is an important factor in economic development and also in political stability in many countries the rule of law has to be understood as more than simply a coordination game as many writers have argued Following the law is partly a moral issue. It's about the res respect for authority, whether that's deserved or otherwise. It's about the perceived leg legitimacy of a political or legal authority. And it's seeing some rules as so important that we should follow them not simply as a matter of preference, but because it's the right thing to do. So there's moral rules or morally uh, important rules which are followed for different reasons than pure utility maximization, or at least utility maximization doesn't tell us enough about why people follow those rules. So we have to get into psychology, so psychology is another discipline which is needed to understand how rules are followed and why they are followed by particular individuals. We also need to look at the evolution of rules, we have to look at history and the way that rules have evolved through time. We can learn from history about what kind of institutions work in particular circumstances and what kind of institutions don't work. So historians have a lot to teach us. And particular histories that focus on 
the way institutions developed and evolved through time are particularly value, valuable. So if we look at modern society, modern capitalism, we can look around the world and see different kinds of institutions. We see different legal systems. We see different financial systems. We see different political systems. And we can begin to draw some conclusions or try and establish some regularities in the data we have about what works and what doesn't work. So there's debates about different kinds of legal system. There's debates about whether democracy helps or hinders economic development. In fact, that's a complicated story because it may do different things at different stages of development. If democracy is important, how important is it to establish it? Will China have a problem because it's not a democracy in the future? Those are the kinds of questions that are important for understanding the role of institutions in modern economies and more generally in the world. So we have a huge number of research questions and it's through the resources of multiple disciplines being bringing together that we can create an agenda for, for institutional research. Is this a bit over ambitious? Is this going too far? Is it not possible in today's world, today's academic world, where everything is compartmentalized into different disciplines? Yes, to some extent it is ambitious, but we have precedents of interdisciplinary cooperation in other fields. For example, in technology, where there's cooperation under one umbrella. For example, innovation studies is a highly successful area which is focused on the development of technology and in particular technological innovation, not simply from a technological perspective but also from a social and economic and uh, uh, other perspectives, or even a philosophical element to that argument as well. So innovation studies has grown enormously as an area of research in universities. It's achieved government funding from grant, grant warding authorities uh, throughout the world because technology has been seen as important and it's been accepted that some kind of multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary cooperation is required to understand these phenomena. But as Douglas North said a long time ago, quite rightly, when he was beginning to pioneer the world of institutional research, he argued, made an important statement that institutions are just as important as technology. We tend to think that technology is often the magic bullet or the magic solution to any problem, but also we need the right institutions to make sure those institutions can work uh, and those, those technologies can operate properly and this is ju just as important as the technological fix. So just as we have interdisciplinary cooperation to deal with technology, I think it's important to argue for interdisciplinary cooperation to further the research on a global scale about how institutions work and how they can be improved.